The Hismet schools are open to women, are open to girls, and provide in some areas the only education that these students have. And so again, it would be a very sad day if these schools were not there. I am Bob Bennett, and it's really an honor to be here to talk about the Hismet movement in Turkey. And uh, my background is that I'm a, a native Texan, uh, born in Texas, and grew up in a scenic spot in North Texas called Amarillo, Texas, which in Spanish means yellow. Uh, it's not exactly a very pretty place, but it was a nice place to grow up. And uh, I've been in Houston now for about 30 years and practice law here. Um, and got to know something about the uh, Hismet movement and uh, have been very intrigued with it ever since. Several years ago, I guess it's been uh, eight years now, um, I had my first trip to Turkey. Uh, we went with an interfaith group with some of the leading citizens in Houston, both uh, in the medical community and the legal community, and had a what I consider a sort of life-impacting trip on many, many levels and have become kind of a uh, quasi-expert, quasi-affectionado of Turkey, Turkey culture, Turkey history, uh, in many ways the Hismet movement. That's been an evolving thing over, again, many, many years and uh, much study and many visits to Turkey. And at first I was kind of skeptical, you know, what are these people up to? Why are they doing this? Do they have a hidden agenda? Is this really uh, believable? Uh, I, in growing up in uh, Amarillo, Texas, uh, if you were a Baptist, that was kind of exotic. You know, that was about as exotic as you got. And uh, an exotic trip growing up in Texas would be to Oklahoma City. So to go to Istanbul, to uh, be in Turkey, and then to come uh, to know this group of people uh, was really uh, life impacting, as I said, because of all the things they've accomplished and uh, the good they've done. I have uh, in many ways studied him. I've read his books. I've read books about him. I have met people that in the United States, I would say, are in the upper levels of the movement on a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, even though I've never met him, I certainly have met a number of people who have met him. And uh, he is a uh, wonderful leader. He's a person that inspires not only adults, but inspires youth. And the uh, impact of that on so many levels uh, has been profound. And so uh, I certainly am an admirer of him. Uh, there are some things that I find could be improved. But I certainly am an admirer of him, and uh, there's been talk about him being nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, and uh, I think that would be another wonderful thing. The interfaith activity, again, as I said in my uh, sort of introduction, this is how I first got involved. In Houston, there's what's called interfaith ministry, which I was on the board of directors. And Jews, Muslims, Christians, other religions come together for uh, community service. One of the big things we do here is Meals on Wheels. And so uh, from my background and my interest, I've always felt that interfaith dialogue, interfaith uh, getting along, interfaith respect is very, very important. And so when I had the opportunity to extend my knowledge to go with a group, an interfaith group, to Turkey, and I've done this on four occasions now over the last eight years, and meet with Muslims and meet with people who want to understand 
uh, other faiths, want to understand the United States, un want to understand foreign policy, want to understand how people should get along, uh, this is one of the most important contributions that the movement has given, uh, not to Texas, not to the United States, but to the world, of trying to simply bring people together. Uh, it's really hard to hate those who you know. And if you know them, that's one of the first steps to respect. And from respect, we go to understanding. And from understanding, we go to love. And I think that is the direction that uh, um, Gulan wants to take us. And I'm happy he is. The experience I have with the uh, Hismet schools uh, is limited personally to the ones that I visited over the last uh, eight years in the major cities in Turkey. And when I've gone to those schools, I've talked to teachers, I've talked to principals, I've talked to the students. Uh, we even had a pickup basketball game at one of the schools, which I uh, unfortunately didn't win. But uh, being able to talk, and in, in most of these schools, uh, probably uh, all of them, uh, there's language, uh, there's English uh, training. And so on, on the higher levels, the, the kids speak very good English so we can talk. And you do find a great variety of background uh, among the students. And so I think that's important in Turkey that there is the sort of a, an open class uh, with no restrictions of students who can come to these schools. Now, I've also talked to students uh, and teachers and principals who have gone to the other schools in not all the 160 countries where the schools are located, but I know that these schools uh, serve a very, very useful purpose. Uh, in fact, almost a courageous purpose, especially in areas where they are not allowing uh, girls and women to go to school. Uh, the Hismet schools are open to women, are open to girls, and provide in some areas the only education that these students have. And so again, it would be a very sad day if these schools were not there. I'm very familiar with the charitable activities uh, that occur both in the United States and in Turkey. And then uh, I have talked to people who've been involved with charitable activities in other parts of the world. And uh, I also had the opportunity to see one of the screenings of a very wonderful movie called Love is a Verb, which talks about what your question was as to what other activities are going on in other parts of the world. Doctors going to prisons uh, and taking care of uh, prisoners there. Uh, food and supplies going to all these other parts of the, of the world. Uh, simply because those individuals have been motivated to do that themselves and because of the instructions and the uh, motivation that Fatua Gulan has given them to be a part of humanity and to serve mankind. Uh, from our Christian tradition, we believe that we have an obligation to be of service. And that's the same tradition that has existed in Islam, but it's now being propelled forward and into a greater depth and greater progress by what the movement's doing. Again, that has never crossed my mind, uh, is it too good? Because uh, I realize that as long as humans are going to be involved in something, there are some things that they're not going to like about it or some things that you find need uh, to be improved. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I look at it as how, look at what they've accomplished, uh, look at what they're trying to do, and then see if we can work together on projects that benefit mankind. So I have never really thought, well, there's a hidden agenda, or maybe there's too good, or maybe they are not very nice to each other when we're not around or maybe they talk behind our backs, or maybe we don't understand Turkish. That's not an issue to me because uh, of the development of relationships, the development of friendships, the personal observation of what I've seen and what the uh, group has accomplished. 
You know, one of the things that always comes up when somebody says, you know, what was one of the highlights of one of my trips to Turkey? And uh, there was a uh, member of the organization here in Houston, and we had missed a flight, and we had to take a different flight, and we had to transfer luggage from one bus, and so we were trying to do this and trying to get away. And this individual, by himself, took all the luggage of about 15 people and loaded it on this bus so we can catch the airline by himself. Now, to me, I was just astonished of the dedication, the uh, love that he had to make sure we appreciate, make sure we got to the right spot. And, 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 and that incident can be multiplied so many times in all my trips of people opening up their homes to us. I've had dinners on uh, very common kitchen floors with uh, people in Istanbul. I've been in high-rise, very exclusive apartments where he actually ate off gold-rimmed uh, plates. And uh, to a person, I've never felt concerned about my safety. I've never felt concerned about uh, being in Turkey. Um, just the opposite, I have felt that this is what interfaith dialogue and humanity should be doing in talking and getting to know each other. And from the luggage to the meals to the guiding to the making sure that we felt comfortable, uh, there's so many, every trip has a story of someone sacrificing to make sure we appreciated the culture, the history, uh, and the Turkish people. So I am forever uh, grateful for the opportunity that I've had to get to know the movement and get to know the members of the movement. One of the things that I found interesting in watching what's going on in uh, Turkey uh, and following again from afar, uh, when these first cases came out and there was the telephone recordings and there was issues of payments being made and bribes being taken, uh, and uh, one way to approach that, of course, was to launch a uh, judicial or prosecutorial investigation. And with that, in order to do it properly, and in the United States, we hold uh, sacrosanct, hold very important that the uh, DA, district attorney, or the prosecutor in a case, is given independence to go after whatever facts they want to gather to question whoever they want to. And this is a uh, pillar of our legal system that the prosecutor is allowed the freedom to do these things. That being my background and my interest when I then heard that not only the prosecutors but thousands of policemen and even judges were being transferred, were being taken out of important assignments, were being sent to the hinterlands, were being sent out to the provinces, uh, one has to wonder is this really a democracy and a country based on laws, or is it based on a dictatorial mandate that's coming out of Ankara and from the presidential palace? Because this is not the way that an investigation should be conducted. And so that's caused me great concern. And what I see in the newspapers about people being arrested at Zaman, when I see in the newspapers about television producers being uh, harassed, uh, one has to really question what's going on in the country. The most uh, important contribution of Khizmat Movement and uh, Ustaz Fatullah Golan is the industry of making of human being. This is the most important part of this movement. I think the Hizmet Movement is one of the moderate voices condemning terrorism and violence of any sort. I'm hoping that now in the light of this increasing terrorism around the world, we'll hear more of the moderate voices.